the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 63 of The Daily Mother Swole, 63. And today, I am here to explain to you why you, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you work out too much. You work out too much. And I had this problem when I was, when I was a wee lad back in the day, back in the day. So we're turning it back to when I started training. Now I used to train, I used to work out, you know, six or seven days a week. I wasn't into yoga at this time. And, you know, I had this mental outlook. I I did take rest days, but I had this mentality with that I wasn't growing unless I was working out. And this is at the beginning because I read up a lot about what bodybuilders were doing, and I read up a lot about the subject in addition to my major in college. So I really invested time in learning what the pros did. You know, of course, not with the anabolic steroids, but their workout patterns, their bodybuilding splits is still true for someone that's on or off anabolics. It's just the pattern, the bodybuilding split, the overload per body part, you know, how to get large, how to eat to get big. The principles are still the same. So as I realized more and more work, you know, building muscle is not done in the gym. As I've gotten older, as now I'm an old venerable man, what up, Bree? What up, baby cakes? As I've gotten older and wiser, my rest periods have gotten longer. I take days off like you, I probably, I don't know, sometimes I work, I rest more than I, they work out. I rest more than I, than I actually exercise. And that might be an exaggeration, But I'll take three days off without blinking. I know I'm very busy. I'm doing a lot with the social media. I'm doing a lot with the swole, with video editing. You know, I do train some clients and teach yoga classes. So it's not like I'm just not doing anything. But I don't mentally lose any sleep over it. I don't lose any sleep. I don't miss a step. I don't miss a beat. I don't feel like I'm losing out anything when I take a day off. The reality is you're growing, you're developing, you're changing, your muscles are repairing when you're resting. Not when you're working out. When you're working out, you're damaging. So actually, the sooner you can get, the quicker you can get in the gym, make it efficient, do your damage, and get out, the better. The quicker you can get out, the quicker you can get out, the sooner you can start recovering. And someone on Periscope just said that they lost their baseball And those of you on SoundCloud and iTunes and Stitcher are shit out of luck. But everyone else, guess what I found? Mm -hmm. Well, come on. Oh, there it is. There it is. Is that what you're looking for? There's your your baseball right there. I have four of them, actually. I'll only show two. So rest periods are absolutely essential. Rest is when your testosterone increases. That's when your growth hormone increases, when you start repairing. It's when you are putting things back together. It's like working out is like a, you know, a tormented, you know, spasming three-year-old yeah, knocking all the Legos down. Your repair days, your rest days, are you bending over, picking them up, stepping on the Lego pieces barefoot like, oh, fuck. You know, Junior did it again. You know, picking up all the pieces, cleaning up after your kid. So clean up, the clean up. The, you know, putting everything back together. I lost my washboard. Yeah, I'll have to show you that later. God damn. Follow me on Snapchat. I've been showing a lot more. I've been showing a lot more. Yeah, my podcast is on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. Same thing, Daily Swole and uh, Swole Normas. Um, I'll tell you more about that at the end. So in other words, rest. You need to rest. You need to rest more. So you can do a couple things. That was just the prime. That was just, I used to want to work out all the time. I used to think I was seeing progress in the gym, working out, working out, working out. If I wasn't training, I wasn't seeing progress. I wasn't moving forward. But then you realize that not only rest, but extra rest. Sometimes you need extra rest. Think about it. If you rest one day a week, let's say you train hard like I do. You rest one day a week. Think about it. One day a week, one day out of seven. Add that up. That's 52 days off a year. That means you're working out for, do the other math, okay? 
So you, the opposite, you are, let's say, 52, 365. What is that? 313? Is that right? 313 days of the year, technically, you know, if you include holidays. So if you take it literally, 313 days a year that you're actually working out, okay? That's a lot of workout days with not a lot of off days. If you think about that percentage, you are on all the time. You're doing damage to your body all the time. Sometimes you need extra rest days. One day a week is not enough to repair everything that you're doing damage to. Just because you're not sore doesn't mean your body is completely recovered. You're still working on a deficit. You're kind of always damaged if you're going on a cycle. You think because you did chest on Monday, and then you did back, and then you did quads, and then you did shoulders, you did biceps and triceps, your chest is still working as a stabilizer, still engaged. Your body, physiologically, your body, like your system is still being overloaded somewhere. Your neural system is still being overloaded somewhere. Don't forget, it's not just that body part. It's your brain, it's your heart, it's your lungs, your organs. Everything is just repairing 24-7 because you're damaging it 24-7. Sometimes you need two, three, four, five days off. Bodybuilders, because they put their bodies under such duress, sometimes take a month or two months off after they do a competition, after going through all that stress. So it's important to understand how vital rest is, repair. And sometimes you need more than just on your weekly, on your micro scale, you need it on a macro scale. So rest days can go by schedule. You can schedule them in or you can just go by feel. Me personally, I don't schedule it in. I don't schedule it. I don't say, oh, I'm going to rest on Monday. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. I'll rest on Friday. I just rest when I need to. I feel tight, but I don't have time. And I just, you know, the way my workout schedule that week has come around, I'll just take a day off or I'll take two days off. After I did that 1,801 reps, I didn't work out till yesterday, so I took Tuesday and Wednesday off. took two days off. And I took, I don't think I worked out Sunday. I think I took Sunday off. And then I did the high reps on Monday. So I just take time off. I rest. Here's your, here are a couple of the things where you could figure out maybe when you need rest. And these are a few symptoms of what's known as overtraining. Uh, you want to overtrain like at the gym, but overtraining meaning your body has too much overload and it's a negative. You're, it's too much. Your body can't recover. So these are a couple of warning signs. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's a lot of them. But here are a couple that you might notice, okay, that you might notice. First off, elevated heart rate. Elevated heart rate. If your heart rate's elevated, if you realize Let's say you measure your heart rate first thing in the morning. If it's elevated for a few days in a row, you need to back off. This is very common for aerobic athletes or people that do a lot of like long distance running or cycling. Trouble sleeping. If you have trouble sleeping or in, or not or, or lack of quality of sleep, that could be a result of overtraining. It's a result of the nervous system and issues with the feedback uh, from too much stress. Longer recovery periods, if you're not healing from workouts, if you're too sore for too long, that could be a product of nutrition and diet, but it can also be a product of just working out too much and not giving your body enough chance to recover. And the breakdown is lingering and the repair is failing. So your body becomes less efficient at repairing because it's just overloaded for too much for too long and you need to back off. Also, uh, decrease in strength. And uh, that could be something where you just start seeing decreases in progress. Your weight, your lifts go down, you just feel weak, you feel drained. Sometimes it's not, oh, I gotta get back into the gym, I need to work out hard. That's a misconception. Oh, I'm getting weaker, I gotta hit it harder. No, sometimes you're getting weaker, you need to back off, you need to rest, recover, and then come back stronger, okay? Am I a vegetarian? Oh, <laughs> fuck no. You're obviously new to this channel. You're obviously new. I was like, <laughs> anyone that follows me at all is laughing their ass off right now. Uh, appetite. Appetite. If your appetite goes down, if you are not as hungry as you normally are, if you're not as hungry as you normally are, that could be a sign of overtraining. Your body just, it just, it's pretty much shutting down. The normal systems, normal processes are shutting down. You might not feel as hungry, even though you normally eat X, Y, and Z, you're just not you feel like you're stuffing it in. It's just your body's feedback systems that are failing. They're just becoming less efficient. Your body is getting a little bit delirious, getting a little confused. You need to sometimes back off. And my favorite, this is my favorite. In my opinion, I don't, everyone's going to have their thing. You're going to know when you're overtraining. If you know your body and you learn, you're going to know when you're overtraining. Like you're going to kind of sense it. Like, okay, I just feel a little bit, you know, let's say drained or I'm not sleeping well. I just feel a little bit like, you know, sluggish. Here is where 
I notice I'm overtraining or I'm working out too much is when I don't feel like working out. It seems simple. But there's sometimes when I'm like, I don't feel like working out today. No, nah, man, you got to go. And I'll take my pre-workout or I'll do my pre-workout ritual and I'll go and I'll do it. I'll have a great workout. Sometimes I just don't feel like it. I just feel, oh, from the bottom, I just have no interest in working out. I'm like, oh, I don't feel like working out today. I know I got to take time off. I know I got to take time off. We're going to do some great Q&A, so I'm going to leave this open in like one second. I'm almost done. If I don't feel like working out, I got to take time off. So if I don't feel like it, I don't go. I don't go. Why would I go if I don't feel like it? Sometimes I know. I know the difference. It's a very subtle difference where I don't feel like going. I got to suck it up and go. And I push myself and I force myself to go and I have an awesome workout. But I know the difference between those feelings. But you don't know that unless you know your body. I know my body. I know what it means when I feel like I don't work out. And I know what it means when I feel like I really don't want to work out. It's a subtle difference, but I know the difference and I take off when I need to. I don't push it. Because if you push too much, you are going to, you're just going to burn out. You're going to burn out and you're going to stop seeing progress. That is what I have for you. Got some good questions. Got some good questions. I saw one. Uh, Let's take a couple. Let's put these online as well. Uh, on off days, doing like push-ups and doing like some body weight stuff, is that still rest? Uh, it depends. It depends on what you normally do. You know, some of those things and some of those questions I saw are, you know, you take days off, do you just do nothing or do you do some kind of activity? That's great. You could do active rest. Rest day does not mean you have to sit on the couch and do nothing. Sometimes that's what you need. Sometimes that's what you need. You need to sit on your butt and just veg out, watch a movie, watch some TV. You need to just physically not move too much. And I've had those days and it's great. You can also do active rest. You can have like a casual game of basketball. You can go for a walk. You can go for a nice, you know, casual bike ride if you like, you know, to ride a bike just for entertainment, not for exercise, not pushing yourself. Uh, You can go on like a long board or you can uh, go, let's say, um, well, down here, a lot of people do, what's it called? Paddle boarding. You can you know, do yoga. Those are great recovery, active rest where you're resting, where you're not overloading your body. I'm talking about in terms of resistance training or high intensity activity. You got to bring down the intensity. You got to back it off a little bit. That's a great question. Active rest, active rest, active rest is when you're resting. You're not overloading. You're not doing chest and back. You're not doing bench press. You're not doing heavy squats or deadlifts, but you're still moving your body. Okay. I think the body should always be in motion unless you really feel like you're really, really super. So you're really, sometimes just need to take off and do nothing. But you should always be moving, stretching, foam rolling, doing something to aid the recovery because your body is still in motion. Even though if you're not moving, inside your body is moving. And the more you can facilitate blood flow and lymphatic fluids and any kind of mobility is going to benefit you in the long run. Okay? I'll stay for a few minutes after on Periscope and Busker. Thank you so much for joining me today for episode 63 of The Daily Mother swole found both my baseballs bitches have a great great rest of your friday flex friday i'm gonna stay for a few minutes after and i will see you all tomorrow at 12 noon eastern time one two four peace out peace out